Welcome everyone to the Howl Podcast, where we feature individuals and entities from various backgrounds who have captivating stories to tell. Our goal is to bring people together by sharing diverse perspectives and experiences to inspire positive change in the world. And today I am your host, Nicholas James Barber, and my guest today is the one and only Bea Gonzalez from the Philippines. Hi everybody! <laughs> Bea Gonzalez is a graduate of De La Salle College of St. Benilde. She later moved on to event planning and marketing. She has been a model and a makeup artist. And now she's currently working at Look At Me PH. Welcome to the show, Bea. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's been a long time coming. I remember like kind of talking about this last year that yeah. we were going to sit down and talk about so many stuff you know I'm, like right now we're just gonna focus on you getting the people to know about you and then we can talk about the other topics on a later episode which i don't really think it's been being spoken about online in the philippines or in america so or very anywhere <laughs> yeah so those episodes will be uh very interesting let alone this one here so a uh, woman of many, many abilities, capabilities, and professions. How, I love it. <laughs> how was that like? Like, since you graduated in the great CSB, uh, where has life taken you? I know, you know, uh, I believe like second year college, that's when I moved to America. So it's pretty interesting because, you know, that saying when people say that you don't actually take up what you studied in college unless it's to become like a lawyer or a doctor <laughs> or an engineer even i i believe that after i finished because i took up business management and export management it was a double degree of sorts and now i'm marketing <laughs> <laughs> hey, it isn't too far from the tree right like business marketing <laughs> Yeah, but if you think about it, because I'm into the marketing, I'm not into marketing, maybe, well, no, technically, yeah, you, you do have a good point, because I market makeup and skincare and cosmetics, and a, uh, a, a lifestyle. That's basically what I'm marketing at work now. Yeah. <laughs> so how was the, uh, how was it before getting to there? You know, I mentioned a lot of, uh, a lot of events in your life, a lot of places where your skills were honed in many different fields. So walk us through that real quick. Yeah. So right before the pandemic, I was finally getting more event jobs, right? So the biggest event I would have to say of my short-lived event career was Comic-Con Philippines. Wow, Comic Con. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We were working with Stanley. God bless his soul. Um, Rest in peace. We were working with, <laughs> we were working with Stan Lee's team. Um and he was actually supposed to come to Manila, but wow. sadly he passed away a couple of days before his flight to Manila because we wow. had a whole plan for him and his team he wanted to come early and stay longer after comic-con so they could explore like the beauty of the philippines but it didn't exactly go that way like he even made a video and um maybe offline i'll find it and i'll send it to you it was stanley greeting his filipino fans telling everybody that he was coming to manila so you're telling me we could have had a filipino character in marvel if for just, sure. I'm sure he would have loved it. Like, whatever he would have done in the Philippines, he would have loved it. That I think, so you know, I, I know that it sounds selfish, but I think one of the main reasons also why I agreed to work on that event was because his then manager was all like, yeah, you'll meet him. You'll see him every day that he's here. And I'm like, <laughs> I, oh I get to see Stan Lee more than once in my lifetime wow. in person in touching distance yeah. that that was it i'm like yes okay 
<laughs> so what was running through your head when you took the news? I'm sure like you were devastated. Like a oh, lot of people sure. were devastated. Yeah, but for sure because the reason why we ended up working with the Stan Lee team as well for Comic Con was because we had this project with this media company, and they wanted to actually highlight Filipino comic book artists. Oh. So the media company was called DV Tech Media. And they held a contest where um, the top 20 um, Filipino comic book artists who submitted their work, we would pick 20 and then we would judge everything for like months and months. And then we'd get to pick the top three. So if you won, you won, um, of course, a substantial amount of money for <laughs> one. Yeah. Though we, we did offer that because... You know, we said if you're first, second, or third place, you would win X amount of money. Um, we'd help you publish one comic book. Um, we'd have people do this and that for you. And because we wanted to highlight, you know, we wanted to highlight... Filipino um, talent. Filipino talent, because we have a lot of great artists I remember the most complicated part of it all was judging. One, because there were so many entries. I bet. Right? Yeah. And then the next one was, how do we pick which entry is what we deemed the best? And then, you know, the, and then eventually when, when we decided who won... And he won the money and everything. Um, he wanted to start writing his comic. The guy almost quit his job because of the money that he won. And we're like, no, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you suddenly became financial advisors. You're like, wait, that ain't a good plan. <laughs> but he was so happy. I think I remember the day that my boss or the guy from DV Tech handed him the check. I had never seen someone cry of that much joy. Aww in my life and I'm like oh and you know it got kind of difficult I know that he's still in touch with the media company because they're gonna push through with their plans with him it's just that I think it got complicated because when right around the time all of this was happening so he was preparing and everything um so when the event finished when comic-con finished we were already planning the next comic-con yeah. And then something happened. So my mom got a heart attack towards the end of the year, right at the beginning of the pandemic. So 2019, mom had a heart attack and then the pandemic happened. So everything, my whole life was put on hold. We were in the hospital for a couple of months. Yeah. And, um, you know, the pandemic started and then the events projects were all tentatively put on hold because if you were in Manila at the time of the beginning of the pandemic, it was very one moment. Everyone is required to stay home. The next moment you can have a companion and then everything went on super lockdown quarantine again that, you know, we'd have to have quarantine passes to enter the grocery and only one person per household can enter Wow. Like the grocery because you're only issued one quarantine pass per household. That is that's is very different than here. Yeah, I've heard like many stories in the Philippines and you also had like region locks, right? Like Yeah. There were checkpoints and you couldn't leave certain city districts if you were from a certain district. You weren't allowed to leave. And then I remember um People were trying to figure out how to forge a quarantine pass to be able to get out of the house together, to at least go to the grocery together. Okay, yeah. I was about to ask if it was like for for essential things or for like lakwacha lang. <laughs> no, 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 for essential things because no one could make lakwacha. Everything was closed. The only things open were groceries, Mercury Drug, Watson's Pharmacy, and normal Watson's stores, but only a specific amount. I heard and SM was open too. Was, was that but 
their groceries were open, but the retail stores, nothing, nothing okay. was open. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And like restaurants for a while, you know, no one could enter restaurants. Everyone was so short staffed. Like if you wanted to order, it would be through takeout. And um, if it was through pickup, you would have to be at a specific distance from the door. Yeah. And then, so for example, if you were at a random Jollibee and there, usually Jollibees in Manila have a parking lot in front of it. They'd put a table there. The guy would come out with your takeout, put your takeout on the table, <laughs> and then walk away as quickly as he could, and then you would walk. And then it got so bad that it wasn't even just masks anymore. People were required to wear face, face shields, shields yeah, and masks. So you can only imagine how hot that was. What was the, the moment? What was the science? I I don't want to like super stay on this topic because I know it's controversial, yeah. but. How effective were the masks? Because I think that got phased out here right away in America. Um, well, okay. So generally the masks, they stuck. They yeah. they stuck. People were getting... I, I, I saw the pictures in the States. People there were getting hella creative with how they were putting their masks on. Yeah. <laughs> but in Manila, everyone was just so terrified. Either okay, so I noticed before you know we switch topics. Um, they were either too terrified to step out of the house without one, or they were that desperate to be able to go outside of their homes that they would wear masks just so they could leave their house. Okay, okay, yeah. It sounds like um, the people were more considerate of other people. Is th- is that true? Like, yeah. Because here, that- I felt like there was some resemblance <laughs> of class warfare when COVID struck because the people in the service industry tend to be of a certain demographic, correct? And yeah. then the people who were getting sick, you know, the people who needed to keep working were from that demographic. So they see thousands of people a day. And then they get sick and then they go home to like their multifamily households where there are many compromised people, right? And then they all yeah. get sick and it just like steamrolls, right? So do you think that people cared about each other in, in that regards? Like did were, uh, were their desires to get good services more than like, you know, bracing the storm, I think so. And I That's guess <clears throat> in, in with the way I look at it, too, I think also another reason why, um, you know, a lot of people here cared more about masks. Um, Filipinos usually tend to follow the rules when it comes to their health. Okay. When it comes to health care, they will, they will do whatever it takes to keep themselves healthy. One, because, you know, healthcare here is like crazy expensive, but also because they a lot of people started living with their family members to save money, to save to save in general. So when you tend to live with your whole family, if you didn't want to end up in a scary covid facility or in the hospital alone because no one would be allowed to go with you, then, you know, Either don't leave your house so you don't have to wear a mask or you wear a mask and you disinfect when you get home. Yeah. So there's more of yeah. a conscious conscious uh, capability of being safe because others may madadamaika pretty much. Like you'll get someone yeah. sick because of what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I knew a lot of people like that here too, actually. And that was the, that was a tricky thing because... You were forced to, you. hey, you don't want to work? Okay, someone else is going to take your job. And then you're like, well, I can't get my grandma sick. I can't get my mom sick because they, yes. Yeah, so Filipinos actually were kind of the, in LA, I, I can only speak of LA. Um, Filipinos were the ones that got 
most affected in COVID because we were in the health industry. You know, we 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 lived in like yeah. like I think it goes beyond um, saving money, like living with family because you care. You know, your mom cares. Your mom and dad care for you when you're young. They get older, you care for them, and it's just very organic for us. Like we're not tossing yeah. our kids out at like 17, 18 years old. So and then you're in Manila where you tend to live with your parents for as long as humanly possible. <laughs> right? Like it's just it's normal for us. But during this COVID too, and I sounds like you started off really strong. Like your mom getting sick and then COVID just hitting you guys like that lockdown was intense. How did you find time or or energy to start your uh your career and your field that started in COVID? Uh- Okay, so when my mom got a heart attack, she was forced to rest by her doctor, right? And, you know, to me, I was like, okay, so the the pandemic was sort of a blessing because in a way, it forced my mom to rest. It forced mom to stay home. But it was a curse at the same time because it was driving me crazy. I had no work. I don't like, I don't like it when I'm not working. I mean, okay. I've been working for a very long time. I mean, I would take odd jobs. I would do whatever it takes to earn my own money. I mean, my mom would try to financially support me. That that part is true, but it always felt better when I had my own stream of income. But all of that came to a screeching halt when I lost my events job. Ooh. So... When I, when, of course, for the first few months of the pandemic, no one was hiring. Because everyone thought, oh, it's not going to last that long. We're going to be fine. By, I think, like the fifth month of the pandemic, everyone was hiring. (laughs) Because, because online businesses were booming. You know, online banking, online shopping, online Everything. The industry changed pretty much when when COVID yeah. hit, right? Like it forced the change. Yeah. In. If you were online, you made it. If you can get your business to boom online, you were right. It it does. It changed absolutely everything. Mm. But for me, it it ended up like you know. Of course, I can't do events because events weren't a thing anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I ended up working corporate at an e-commerce company that we were a third party um, vendor for a lot of these official brands. When I say official brands, it's the brands that you and I use every day unconsciously. Um, okay. um, there were clothing brands, food brands, shoe brands, everything. Everything you can think of. So and that we were the ones doing their marketing plans. And um, we would post everything for them on Shopee, Lazada, Zalora, Beauty Manila. An online ordering platform. You name it, we had it. You know? Yeah. And I worked there for a long time. So I switched departments from accounts slash their marketing to what then became their executive escalations team. Ooh, okay. What they didn't tell me was that I was the only one who was going to be on that team. Interesting. And how how was that pitch to you? Like, hey, do you want to <laughs> work? Do you know? Hey, we want you in this department because we think that you can communicate with what the what the customers want better. You know, and I'm like. Okay, yeah, I get that. And then apparently the girl who was supposed to be my partner quit a couple of months before I landed there at her job. So for the first year, I was alone. I was going crazy. So And okay, all that so all that demand, right? All that demand must have hit you like a brick. Uh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had to handle crises from uh, 
customers who were demanding 100% refunds to um, customers who think they got food poisoning to customers who never got their order. And then late at night, I'd have to stay up and help answer reviews for all of the brands one by one. And I'm not exaggerating when I say I think there were about 50 brands that I had to do that for. Yeah. And I would have to answer at least 300 reviews per brand per night. I was up all night. A lot? <laughs> that's a that's a safe estimation. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, and I remember I would take screenshots of what time I would start work and what time I would finish work so that when I charged my then employer overtime, they would ask me, why did you work oh my X God. amount of hours the a day? The audacity. Wow. Yeah. They would ask me, it's like, why did you work X amount of hours today? And I'm like, are you serious? You want to see what I did? Because I took a screenshot of everything. Yeah. Which, and here's everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, You know, on paper for all those business minded people, it is a safe. Pra I mean, I'm not safe, but it is a reasonable practice getting receipts or everything but when you know you are working your you know employees to the bone and then putting that it creates a toxic work environment whether oh, or not yeah. they know because the, the business owner is kind of thinking like okay how do i keep my business afloat he may oh, yeah. they may not be earning millions of pesos or hundreds of thousands of pesos and being comfortable but they still want their business to grow but i really believe you know coming from the family i came from that we need to treat our workers properly. And I want to jump into this topic with you, uh, this little segment about how do we make the work environment less toxic and what are the benefits of this to employees, you know? Because now we're at the age where we're starting industry. And I've had a couple of friends who got started in businesses, you know, and it varies on how they handle the employees, which kind of breaks my heart and inspires me too, you know. So from your opinion, how, what are the base fundamentals of creating a less toxic work environment? Oh, okay. Well, one, fair pay. <laughs> fair okay, pay wait. meaning, like, uh, for, for the many different people listening to this. Okay, wait, so for the many pe different people listening, I'm sure that a lot of the people listening are either younger than me or are my age, right? And I noticed that with our age group, and especially the ones younger than us, we've become more, I can't say savage, but we've become more openly aggressive with how we want to be treated, right? Mm -hmm. And I support it. Because I went through, I think I've gone through all of the tiers of bad to great work environments. This entire, for the last three, four years, I think that's that's exactly what I went through. So, um, for one, you need to pay people what they're worth. I get it, your company, it's a, it was a pandemic and everything, but... If you learn to pay your employees what you know they're worth and not undercut them and try to budget how much you're going to pay them, and if you start paying them right, they're going to do their work better. Because, especially for Filipinos, because it's like, oh, this person is going to pay me this much. I can't half-ass the work I'm giving them. I have to give you like my 100% because you're paying me what I asked for, or you're paying me exactly what I know I'm worth, right? Yeah. And I get it that at the beginning of asking for your salary, especially with the way the temperature of the corporate environments were at the beginning of the pandemic, I know that it was hard to ask for the salary that you wanted, right? Because yeah. you were, of course, you were in a hee hee yeah. You can't ask for the salary that you used to ask for before the pandemic started because you think in your head, it's like, this company might not hire me because I'm asking for a lot of money and they might not <laughs> hire me. Yeah, 
and I'm like, because, because, um, you know, they're gonna hire someone obviously who may or may not be as skilled as me, but is willing to take the big pay cut because they lost the line. baby. <laughs> and that was my first mistake with the first company I worked for at the pandemic. I did not ask for the salary that I knew I was worth. And um, they gave me the salary that they thought would be good for me. And so when I was dying of sleep deprivation at the job that I was working, in my head, it would play over and over again in my head. It's like, I'm not getting paid enough for this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My bosses who rely on me get to sleep at a reasonable time and do a reasonable amount of work and they earn significantly more than me. And I'm here gaining eye bags. Busting your <laughs> ass off. Yeah. Busting my yeah. ass off. Underpaid and overworked. And, you know, and it wasn't helping that. OK, so step two with creating a better, less toxic work environment, hire better management. Someone who no, knows how to do their job. <laughs> exactly. No, not just that. I mean, you know, you learn a lot about people when you're forced. OK, maybe the word force is wrong, but when you work with them on a daily basis, okay. you learn particular work. The time. nuances of a human being. Yeah. And then, you know, as a girl, as bad as that sounds, as a girl, we're more observant, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to specific things, especially when it has to be around specific, and I don't want to say this, but we have to be wary mostly with specific genders that are around us. Okay. Okay. You know, like, if my manager is a guy, I kind of have to worry about the things I say or the things I do. Because it's true. Because it's true, you know. Um, and I won't disclose it 100%, but I had a friend who worked with me at the same company, right? I had better grades. I had a better resume. But he had the better salary interesting yeah interesting <laughs> i was working there already for a year about a year when that person entered and they paid him significantly more than they were paying me and um, i had the better credentials and on top of the workload you were doing was he doing the same amount of work or oh Ooh. The man just won a lottery ticket, it seems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See? And, you know, when my friend told me about the interview, like, oh, I'm done, by the way, I got the job, this is the salary they gave me, and I'm like, you're joking. Yeah. You're actually joking because I'm here. I'm pissed at everything because this guy just got offered a better salary, better working hours than I did. And I also like to think it's because he's a guy. Okay. I think, I think it is safe to say that there is like, f is it fraternizing like, in, in work environments? <laughs> like when, you know, when it, when it gets a little bit bro -y, right? <laughs> Yeah. No, it did get a little bit bro -y when he was when my friend was describing the interview to me and I'm like, huh. So he likes you better because you're a guy. OK. OK. <laughs> and <laughs> but he quit before I did. Ooh. oh, oh, why? What was the reason? He couldn't take the management. <laughs> well, he saw the toxicity of it all and he left oh, wow. after yeah. four months i feel like uh after six years in like corporate 
I've developed like this rule set in my in my head of well, like what kind of human being I want to be because when it comes to work or in the field that I was in sales like I'm mostly there you know and if I'm being subjected to <laughs> environments such as yours such as what you've described I was like it it affects me in a way that on my free time I am still affected by my work because you're still thinking yeah. about it. You want to be a good employee. You want to, you know, give to this company that has given you this opportunity. So like yeah. what you mentioned, creating a less toxic work environment would need a balanced uh, work life. Work life and, you know, For civilian sure. life. That balance is essential. You know, you need to have your employees be on the clock, their work. But when they're out, they're getting the proper rest, <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe. And then clear communication from the employers to the employee, like what is expected of you, when are you going to come in and w- w- what the expectation part, you know, like, am I going to be working overtime all the time? And why am I doing that? Right. So clear communication. It's that. Respect. It's that. Which <laughs> I do. It does not sound like there has been respect to the employees. Oh my God. That's why I left my first pandemic job. Okay, so I don't care if he's listening to this podcast. I hope he is, and I hope he hears me. You're my ex-boss. He knows exactly who he is, right? I quit because he... What broke it for me was a couple of days before it solidified in my mind that I was going to quit is that he was berating me and telling me that I was doing a shit job when I was the only, I was the only person in this department, right? Mm. I was the only person in this department, the only one doing absolutely anything. And mind you, my job wasn't easy. Oh, I bet. I bet. Okay, so you're customer let, let, facing, let, right? You're you're dealing with all the grievances, all these these emotions, these for all of the brands on all of their platforms. Now <gasps> imagine. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then after I talk to the angry customer, I then have to talk to the angry brand that's asking me, why haven't you replied to me today? I, and I kind of wanted to, to reply. I'm sorry. I just got yelled at by like maybe by that time of day, like the 10th customer. And, you know, these phone calls don't last like five, 10 minutes. They last as long as the customer wants to yell. Yeah, as long as I, they uh, feel that it is essential to express how oh, yeah. their order did not go. <laughs> so I was already telling myself, okay, I'm going to quit. I will take a very, very long break because this first job broke me mentally so okay i was very i am still very thankful that they gave me a job during the pandemic right yeah i'm thankful 100 percent. it was a great opportunity i learned a lot i met a lot of great people but i think that um when you see the people around you and not just you i was contemplating resigning and i didn't tell a soul up until two weeks before I actually resigned. Right? Why was that? Why did you keep it in? It, because I was like, okay, no, maybe I'm not going to resign. And of course I was scared because I'm going to be like, I'm going to go back to being jobless. In a, in a to- market that's uh, dwindling, I don't know, in jobs. Uh, what was the status of jobs then? Right? Yeah. Like if you quit, that's okay. They can get someone to replace you in five, 10 minutes. Literally, yeah. they can just call someone who applied yeah. around the week that you did or so people apply to these jobs every day yeah. and then so for me it was like okay maybe I'll, I'll think about it maybe it's just because you know it's this and that and the malls are gonna open soon so maybe my job will become lighter you know that sm will help carry the load <laughs> 
I wish. I was kind of hoping, like, can the malls just please open so the brands can talk to other people other than me? Yeah. Right now. But then, okay, so there was this one, the day that it broke me, so I can describe it to you. My manager, my manager is the guy that I was addressing earlier. He berated me and told me that I was doing a shit job for not being able to reply to a specific brand email within the day. But what he seemed to forget was a couple of days beforehand, there was a PR crisis that went on and it affected literally tens of thousands of people. And I had to fix that oh. by myself. One by one. And he was asking me why I didn't have time to reply mm. to an email. So I was like, and then when he talked to me about it, he started berating me about it. He started yelling at me about it. He's like, you're not doing your job. And even if you did, it's such a shit job because you didn't reply until the next day. And I'm like, and I'm done. I called HR and I said, I quit. Well, good, they even good tried on you. Good on and, you. And you know, the bad part is they tried to force me to stay. Right? After that, after yelling at you. Yeah. Classy. And then they tried to force me to stay and finish my, my two months notice. Right? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to say, and, you know, at that point, I had saved all of my leaves. And I used them all in the span of my leaves span to two months. <laughs> nice. Right? And I'm like, play yes, the game. Don't let the game play you. <laughs> exactly. And now, and, 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 of course, they were panicking. They were like, you can't do that. I'm like, yes, I can. <laughs> I think this is a great time to go into like corporate power dynamics. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's let's talk about okay. that. <laughs> I realize that no matter who your boss is, they have to understand that the company can't function without you. Not yet, at least. We don't have Not AI yet, so. <laughs> oh, God. You know that Will Smith movie where the robots took over the world? iRobot, yeah. Every time someone says that, like, for now, they need us. It's like, <laughs> am I place with a robot? <laughs> Probably. And but, that's why, for me, I think it's very essential for human beings, you know, and for me, for this case in particular, for Filipinos, you know, for, for our people to value each other. You know? Oh yeah. Para bumangon. How how are we going to do that if in work, you know, in something that is essential, we do not respect our employees. Oh yeah. And a, a lot of the time it's it starts up top, right? Like the people the the people managing, the people looking over the manager, the people allowing <laughs> this whatever just happened to exist. So how would you say, you know, a generation's coming to an end <laughs> and soon another generation is going to come up? Like, what are your words to those people? You know, could be younger than us, could be the same age as us, could be older than us. How do the people older than us um, <laughs> listen to what we have to say? Otherwise, you guys aren't going to have billion dollar companies to run. Because, you know... In my head, a lot of these older generations think it's like, yeah, you know, we're going to be fine. People love our products, blah, 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 blah. What happens if all of your employees, all of the employees who are at the age range that understand your customers suddenly up and quit? Yeah. What's going to happen to them? Yeah. You know? All this and value that they think that they are is actually because of the people working for them. And exactly. I don't know why it's so hard to understand that. 
yeah, they're earning millions and billions of dollars or pesos to be a CEO, a CFO, a president, whatever. But what they don't, what I think, what I want to tell the older generation to, if you're about to yell at somebody within your employee pool, put yourselves in their shoes. And if you can do their job for a day better than they ever could, then okay, yell at them, fire them. But if you can't, yeah. just, you know. Help out, I don't, like make some changes. Shit, <laughs> I don't know. Because, you know, 99% of the time, I'm pretty sure if these older generation people tried to walk in our shoes, let's say my shoes in your shoes, yeah. right? they wouldn't survive because okay let's say that we strip them of their money and their connections right mm -hmm. they are the same person in our shoes they're not going to survive yeah 100 mm -hmm. to the people in our age range and younger what i want to tell them is just keep standing up for yourself you can do this we and for can each other i think for each other it's very important to stand stand watch and be vigilant for other people because when we allow something to happen to other people it may happen to us unless you are protected by some magical society bubble that you know so bad stuff doesn't happen to you which it does exist it but does. then things can change so so quickly you know especially with human beings um the one thing is, the one philosophy I really hold dear to me is we create the world we want to live in. Exactly. And if, for example, like even just normal day things, not let's take it out of the perspective of corporate or, you know, this corporate talk. <clears throat> if I see a woman being harassed on the street, would I want my mother, my sister, my daughter, my niece to be harassed in the street? So why would I be okay with behavior like that? And that, that scales exactly. up no matter where you are. So to the younger people, let's create a better world, right? Like that's that's the dream. And let's learn to be kinder. Yes, please. And to stand up for the right things to believe in. We can't let an older generation dictate what they think is right for us and what they think we want. I mean, we know what we want, right? We just gotta, we, we're the generation that they're probably most afraid of. If oh, I'm yeah. being completely Oh yeah. We're the loudest and probably the angriest. Oh so, yeah. So, you know, we're like, oh, okay. If you don't like me, okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find somewhere better and you're gonna panic because your employees are gone. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, you know. Um yeah. for people who are starting out, you know. Uh before we wind this down, I want you to give words of wisdom to me, to the viewers here in America, to the viewers in the Philippines, starting out on a job and something we both experienced, you know, where you're you're just accepting pay. How do we find our value? How do you get your value and Tell management that, hey, I am worth this much. I don't want to work for pennies. Or... Okay, so I eventually learned that by the time I applied to look. <laughs> First of all, when you're applying for jobs, I know it's important to keep applying for jobs, right? Yeah. But apply to the ones that you know you're going to at least enjoy a little bit. Don't apply for something for the sake of applying for something. Do something that you know you're going to learn something in and enjoy at least even a little bit. Because if you hate 100% everything about the job and you're not going to enjoy it, and especially like if you hate the company, if you hate the job description, don't do it. Otherwise, you're going to make it hard for you because people can feel people's energies. You know, I'm oh, yeah. a firm believer in that. So if... You hate your job and you show that you hate your job, your managers and the people around you are going to feel it versus if you're next to someone who loves the job 
and who because they love it they enjoy it more they work better at it um they're more inspired that, every day yeah that, that guy is probably going to be the one to get the raise and not you so pick something remotely close to what you know you want to be doing for the rest of your life and then when you practice and get the skills that you need never be afraid to move on to a better company yes unless of course you're already working for your dream company true you know true yeah like but uh, it, company loyalty or, right like uh yeah. could be a good thing could be a bad thing cuz then you're propagating oh, yeah. companies <laughs> that don't treat people properly but you're loyal to them so in a way we are creating the demand for jobs like that but then if nobody worked for bad comp you know when i say bad companies poorly run doesn't care about their employees and it affects yeah. the state of being of the employees move move even if the pay is good even if you're taking like a 10 percent, 15 percent pay cut downgrade yeah yeah i mental health is important i think and Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't bring our money with us when we pass on this life. So but That's true. Plus, if we want to stay mentally healthy and avoid paying a therapist 2000 bucks an hour, it's probably best that you pick a company that's not going to make you want to go into therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Nipping the problem at the bud before it, it becomes a problem. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, a prime example for this is... Before I started working for Look, so after I quit my first pandemic job, I moved on to a second job for banking. It was online banking, right? Mm -hmm. And I quit after a year and a half for reasons. But I had a couple job offers lined up, right? Some of them were giving me really good financial offers mm. in fields that I knew how to work, but I didn't enjoy as much. And then look offered me a job and they, they loved me and I love them. And now, you know, I'm, I'm working somewhere that I genuinely enjoy working with now. I mean, the stress is something I can handle. I mean, my old jobs prepped me for the highest stress situations. And for that, I'm thankful. But for me, I'm in an environment where I feel very supported. I feel very loved. Everyone around me believes the same things that I do when it comes to makeup, skincare, cosmetics, because... We work around we work around the same objects every day, you know. Yeah, we're all on the same wavelength. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's important. That if you get a chance to work at a company that you believe in more than the others, whether or not the pay is as good, if not greater, take it. Because now I'm at a place where I can genuinely say I'm happier. My bosses are okay with me logging off and leaving work behind at exactly 5.30 p.m. They're, they understand that if I don't reply when I'm on leave, if I go on leave, they said, don't worry. We can do this. We won't text you. We won't call you about anything work-related. We'll just check up on you to see how you're doing, like if you're okay, if you're having fun, but we're not going to give you anything work related and to me that's what's important that you find a company that cares about you i saw your little sigh of relief just reliving that moment right there oh yeah <laughs> no i mean it was it's no joke i mean i loved all of my old jobs i would not have taken them and i would not have stayed at any of my jobs if i didn't love it to an extent right but you know i'm just i'm only human we can only take so much and so, you know, when I had left online banking and I was planning to take a break, the break didn't happen because look at me, PH called and I'm like, oh, my God. 
Yeah. Oh my god, yes, please. I will take it. <laughs> it was so funny because after the call, I ran to my mom's room. I was yelling like I was yelling like a crazy person. My mom started panicking. <laughs> and he isn't the panic type. I was like, oh my god, mom, 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 mom. And I'm like, I got the call. I got the call. <laughs> And then the next, a couple of days later, they called me saying I got the job. I bawled my eyes out. <laughs> right? Yes. I bawled my eyes out. No, I was so I was so close to taking that other corporate job. Although, yeah, okay, the pay grade was something else. Yeah. But but it wasn't something I enjoyed yeah. as much. So when Look called me, I'm like, oh, my God, yes. Yes, I will work tomorrow. Do you need me to work tomorrow? I will do it. <laughs> and, you know, that's when I realized that I made the right choice. I was so happy. Like, my bosses were telling HR and my other managers, oh, I'm so glad that we hired you. I'm so glad that you're here. You know, you were the right choice. It was meant to happen. It was meant to be. And I'm like, oh, my God. Versus my very first pandemic job when I quit, he was like, oh, I'm happy that she left. Wow. Yeah, my 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 manager wow. from the commerce company was all like, you know, he, he even started telling my other former teammates, if we don't like someone, we have to force them to want to quit or to want to leave. Or if we can fire them at our first chance we get, we'll fire them. I'm like, boy, am I glad. We are expendable meat bags. I mean, I know that we're all expendable and everything, but then my new job makes me feel great. The people exactly. Are no, no, no. It's how you are treated, right? You, you, if you are treated expendable, you feel that. Employees feel that. It's like, it's not fulfilling. Like, what value is my hard work to this company when you're just going to get, when you, you're just waiting for an opportunity to get rid of me, not grow me? Because when you are in a company, you want to make a team. You want to make a family that builds your vision. Like if you're if you're the uh, head guy, right? If you're the CEO, yeah. You, know, you want people to come together and build your dream. And there is this mentality, you know, even in the Philippines, that I don't know, you're you're your supreme overlord or something. You know that you you deserve everything and other people don't which I highly disagree with. And we, we will definitely, definitely get into more and we will get more into your uh, wonderful new job. Look at me, PH. Guys, if you do want to check yeah. it out before we talk about it, please, very revolutionary brand of makeup and Bea Gonzalez will be there. You know, you've heard so much about her, but we will, we will have to hear that on the next episode of The Howl. So, Bea, any last words for our audience? Guys, you just have to do what makes you happy and what feels right. That is the lesson of this. What makes you happy and what feels right, that's all you got to do, and everything will follow through from there. Believe it, and you will. it'll happen. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, find, find your reason of being. Uh, work for people who value you and let's let's create a better world everyone oh yeah I, that and be kind, a kinder world oh, for yes. sure be kind not only to others but also yourself self-love is important guys so thank you Bea, so much i can't wait to thank see you, you more and be, to be on the show so i will see you next time and i will see our viewers, listeners, next time too. It has been me, Nicholas James Barber, on The Howl. I hope you guys a very good day. Bye-bye.